I'm I'm the health safety and environmental manager at Cedars Mediterranean Foods in Haverhill. I've been with the company about um, a little over four years. And you can see there on this first slide a variety of the products we make. We make so many kinds of hummus, I can't even count them. Um, we also make our own and incorporate that in some yummy dairy products, some dips. We have a salad department. We make other dairy. And we do a lot of co-packaging for all kinds of grocery stores and other companies. So um, there's a lot going on at Cedars these days. And uh, we're trying to work with the Turi Lab. What I'm here to work with the Turi Lab to try to find some safer cleaning and sanitizing alternatives. So I've done some work with the OTA, Office of Technical Assistance. I wanna put in a blurb for them. Um, I had landed here at Cedars in J July of 2018. And in the fall of 2018, we invited OTA to come in and take a look at our environmental programs and see what we could work on and possibly do better. And that was a very uh, beneficial experience. So I would recommend that to anybody who's, um, and that was that was free. They, a couple of people came in and gave us a, uh, some ideas on things we might need to look at for our air emissions, some ideas for water conservation. And they also said, hey, you should take a look at this Kettle Cuisine case study. Kettle Cuisine makes soup in stainless steel tanks and we're making hummus in stainless steel tanks. And uh, they use, we're using sodium hydroxide also and they were interested in using, finding some safer alternatives. So I read the case study in 2018 and that's what kind of started the the idea that I've had in the back of my head for four years um, to maybe work with the Turi Lab someday ourselves. Uh, we currently use a lot of sodium hydroxide and some other chemicals. I'll give you more information about that in a minute to clean our tank system. So from left to right here, we have homogenizers that make uh, the chickpeas all uniform. And then uh, that goes to batch tanks, the second, photo there where they open that little porthole and add uh, flavorings and, and seasonings to make all the different varieties of hummus. Then the third uh, picture there is one of Cedar's claims to fame is we pasteurize our hummus. It's not raw hummus you're getting. It's been pasteurized. So our customers love that it has a shelf life of 60 days. So that's um, fueled our growth, I think. And the fourth picture there is a holding tank. We have a lot of those, and that's where the finished hummus gets held in a chilled environment until it gets pumped into a container and a filler. So uh, I took a lean manufacturing class. I, I got an email from Terry. said, hey, we have one spot left in this lean manufacturing class for food and beverage manufacturers. And this was free. And I said, wow, are you kidding? Um, I would love to learn more about that. So I signed up and then went downstairs and asked my boss if that was okay, because I, was, I really wanted to take advantage of this great opportunity. That was a wonderful class. And that was uh, free to the 10 people who participated through a, an EPA grant that Joy Onash, who was, who was working at the Turi at the time, got from the EPA. And then after the class, Joy got another EPA grant and she said, hey, would any of you who took the, this lean manufacturing class be interested in hosting a pollution prevention intern? And I said, sure, sure I would. So uh, we ended up uh, having a good experience with Amelia Wagner that she just heard from a little while ago. And, and she worked for us for 12 weeks in the summer of uh, 2022. And that was great because of the EPA funding, we had to cut her a final check of $586. So we had her on site for 12 weeks um, for the, the bargain price, thanks to that. So another, another wonderful thing we got for free uh, because of Tori's work with the EPA. So she was initially started working on um, documenting where some of our food waste was occurring. But you know how it goes when someone with the, with the clipboard is watching you, you might not be doing the same things you're doing when they're not around. So it didn't seem like anything was materializing for her that would be a good project for her to get into over the summer. As the summer wore on, she told me that she had Turi lab experience. And I went, what? 
wow, that would be so great if we could get something going with Turi and switch directions, maybe from food waste to safer cleaning and sanitizing. So she filled out the um, Turi lab application, which was not very long, just a couple pages. So don't let that stop you from trying to work with Turi. Um, that was one of the things that had kind of stopped me. You know, we're all so busy and, and when you're, if your company's growing and you're getting into a million different things, I'd had the application and just hadn't filled it out. So my intern did that for us, working with us to get all the information. And then she actually began working during her internship um, with Alicia in the Turi lab on uh, doing a first round of evaluating safer cleaning and sanitizing alternatives last summer. And that work is still ongoing. And there's uh, Amelia and I down there in the corner. Okay, this uh, the next few slides I took uh, out of uh, Amelia's presentation or final presentation to us. Um, love that the uh, water droplets in the corner. I thought that was great. So this is a baseline of what we're using on the left, the chemicals that we're using. And on the right, we won't dwell on this now, but these chemicals, you know, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, sulfuric acid, a uh, lot of, lot of uh, severe chemical health implications. We do use diluted forms of them often, but still uh, any reduction or replacement of these would be beneficial. And here's Ali uh, Amelia's lab set up. So on the left in the picture, you see the, the sample coupon she's working on. We used uh, 304 stainless steel and 316 stainless steel because that's what our tank systems are made out of. And we used chocolate hummus because we figured that would be the one that would be the hardest to get off. Um, in the middle, you can see she's got her ultrasonic set up there. So she's using different cleaners and different temperatures and ultrasonically agitating the coupons to see what kind of results we get. And they were looking at a gravimetric visual and an ATP measurement to see how clean they got it with the different tests. And as, as she spoke of, they evaluated different cleaners, an enzymatic cleaner, lactic acid, PBW is actually something um, that's used in the brewing industry. And then some alternative sanitizers, lactic acid and some other things there. And there's those sample coupons. So we have blade scrapers inside of our tanks that scrape off most, but not all of the residual um, hummus. And um, she did a pretty good job, I think, of uh, replicating that, just kind of leaving a little bit on there, but not too much, because the blade scrapers get most of it off, apparently. Based on the initial round of testing, uh, Amelia recommended replacing 5229 AFCO, the, the one with sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide in it, with an enzymatic cleaner, replacing the 5229 AFCO with PBW, and uh, replacing the 4325 Perox sanitizer with the lactic acid sanitizer. It's, it's, there's a lot of testing you can do because once you find some things that work, of course, you want to play with it, alter your concentrations, temperatures, and the goal is getting something that works and using as little of it as possible at the lowest temperature possible so that you're saving energy and saving chemicals as well. And then we also wanted to talk to the vendor, find out our current vendor, find out what enzymatic, lactic acid, other solutions they may propose. Um, one of my bosses once said, it's easier to do something with someone than do it to them. He was talking about safety, but it applies to a lot of things. And I wanted to include our current chemical vendor in this process. And I did a little education with our um, local rep. And then uh, on the next slide, uh, Alicia and Amelia had a... a hour-long phone call, I think the regional vice president or something from our chemical company and also our uh, local rep met with them and they discussed um, different alternatives and AFCO provided them with information on some different products that they had. 
And then um, this is a great table here that Amelia just gave me recently. So they put all the safety information on these different alternatives in the, into the P2OA SIS analysis and got um, different scores. So the scores were in all different hazard categories. And then down on the bottom, there's a kind of a weighted average. And you can see that uh, I think the highest score was seven, the highest weighted average in, in some of our current products. And there were a couple alternatives that went down as low as 5.1, 5.4. Um, not huge um, reductions there, but a little bit. And this gives you a lot of information to consider because your site may have um, certain things that you're more concerned about than others. So I like the fact that it gave you scores in different areas. So where we are right now, um, you know, we didn't get any chemicals that had a, a hugely better score a little bit. Um, some had com comparable safety scores, but perhaps greater dermal toxicity or some other property that we really wouldn't like. So we're still chewing on that data and uh, we need to meet as a team here at Cedars and deciding um, which of these chemicals we'd like to uh, test from our present vendor, or do we even wanna think outside the box and give Turi the green light to test a few chemicals from other vendors that may work? And after that, if we do further testing with Turi and some solid alternatives emerge, the next phase of course um, would be pilot testing, trying something, trying a different, different cleaner and a different sanitizer on one of those tank systems that I showed you in the previous slides and seeing how that works. So. We're, we're excited to continue this journey with Turi and work with Alicia and Amelia. We appreciate their help.